Okay, well in our steering tests, we've worked out that this pump has got a bit of leakage to it. It's not getting up to, it's internal leakage. It's not getting up to full smoke, um, full power. So I've had to really rev it to get it up onto relief to 1400 PSI. So we're going to put a new pump on. Now, I can see the brand at the back's AHS, which is a regular fitment for this by the looks. And the pump that I have here to fit, um, it's an AHS as well. But that is Sparex part number S43692. So what we need to do first is undo all the pipes and hoses and things like that. So I've just loosened these a bit earlier just to save a bit of time. Now this one here, when you're undoing one like that, use two spanners just so you can get the um, well what can happen they can if this fitting's loose in the pump you can actually turn this and you start twisting the pump off or twisting the pipe so this pipe here's the return not much pressure here on our tractor it's had a repair up the back there so we'll just pop this out well there's still a little bit of oil there I thought we'd leak most of that away but I'll grab a pot and we'll catch it there we go, we have a pot underneath now. And normally this steering arm comes along through here, but I've taken it off just for the video in this instance. So it's sitting up out of the way. I've got my squeaky stool too, by the sound of it. So I just need to undo that, let that drain. And once we get the new pump on here, I think we'll take this old pump over to the bench and just strip it down so we can all see what's inside them and see if there's, I can show you the wear. Should be able to, I believe. We'll just see. And that's our main pressure line out. So that can go out of the way there somewhere. Now, because we've had a change of fittings here at some stage, your fittings will be different to mine, no doubt. I'll just undo this elbow and throw it on the floor there. And we'll loosen this one. It's just easier to loosen things when they're on a tractor sometimes. And this one here, I think it'll be easier to get on the bench actually. Once I can, I could probably bring a three quarter ring spanner up there. What size is it? Yeah, it's three quarter. I might loosen that just in case. Hang on a second. Okay. See, that's a bugger of a thing to fit on. Um, I wonder. Oh yeah, I can get a long socket on. That might be the way. They've all got Loctite of some sort on the thread by the feel of it. Yeah, you can see the Loctite there. So it's a UN O-ring fitting with a bit of Loctite on as well. Let's see if this little fella opens up enough. Yep.
Okay, and there's some Loctite on there as well by the looks. No big deal. Right, so now, all we have to do, there's two bolts here, they're 3 8 UNC bolts, so a 916 socket fits them. So we'll pop them out. There's one up the top here as well. I might see if I can get this one out all the way first. There we go. Okay. Now it'll either stick or it'll just start hanging down. So. There's no gasket in the box, so I'm not sure what holds it all in. And there we go. There's the pump off. And there is a paper gasket there, so I'm going to have to deal with that. Make one probably. Um, yeah, we'll have to have a look where we sell these pumps. We might have to um, supply a gasket. I certainly didn't get one with this one. Okay, that's pulling the pump off. We'll go and have a look inside it, eh? Okay, this is just a bit of a muck around video. Just have a look in this pump, show you what's in here. We just need to undo the screw. I usually loosen that off and get a little knockometer. Get a little knockometer and go. Okay. Normally on the tractor, that's what you see. And you can see, see all the metal in here. I don't know whether it's run short of oil at some stage or what the story is there. There's your little suction screen. And that filters the oil coming in. It just comes in through there. I think you can buy that filter. Um, yeah, you can see through the hole there. It's actually got it half covered, but it still goes up there, so. It will filter the oil coming in, push it out here so you have a cleaner sample of oil. Now this bloke here, this is your relief valve. There was some discussion about my relief valve being stuck. Stuck closed that would be. And yeah, look, apart from hand pumping it up, there's no way we can really test that. We won't beat that spring, that's for sure. We could possibly pull it apart and have a look, though. I've got to do everything on the bench. I've got a, a cylinder head in my vice <laughs> that I don't want to take out. So there's a cap, a spring and a ball. Easy as that. I don't think I've had one of these apart before. So that cap you must just do up until the pressure is right. 
but you would be able to ship, shim that up if you ever thought you needed to. But it all come out nice, so I don't believe it would have been stuck. Who knows? Now the gears in here, look how thin these are. Um, getting them out can sometimes be a problem. So 17 millimetres it's turned out to be. We won't be putting this back together at all. There's your filter, but that is replaceable, I know. Okay, so that's the end cap, the steel end cap on an alloy pump. You should be able to pull that out, and there we go. And we have a little bit of wear around there, but look, that doesn't feel too bad. And we should be able to pull the idler gear out here. There's a little bit, you can see scoring down through the bottom here. You can see that there's a little bit of scoring down the bottom. Okay, so it must just draw. Draws its oil in from there. So the pump will sit like that. Then this will sit down like that. So the oil will get sucked up here. The pump turns like this. So this pump goes in, this gear goes in there. Okay, so it comes in the top here, the pump turns like that, it brings the oil around the side here and brings it out past the relief valve here and on the other side of the relief valve here is this fitting here. So we could probably see if we can put an O-ring pick down there and show Yeah, so that goes through here and out the fitting there. Your relief valve's here, so if the pressure gets too great, it returns it back in through these holes here. The ball comes off the seat, returns it back into the canister there. All in all, look, it's not as bad as I thought it might have been. You can not feel it with your fingernail, though. But yeah, not too bad at all. The gear's a little bit loose on the shaft, so the key's obviously getting a little bit worn. But there you go, that's a look inside the pump anyway. We're not going to put it back together, we're not going to play with it at all. Um, we're just going to leave it at that. I've been up and I've put the fittings in the pump. I did that on the bench and I've decided to use Loctite 515 on the gasket instead of a gasket. So. It should be just fine in this situation. I'm quite happy with it. Saved me making the gasket and this stuff is, well, I rate it. It goes hard when you take the air away from it. And if there's a little bit in there still, that um, there's a little bit there that comes out, it doesn't, bead up sort of thing.
I think we need to go around here a little bit further. Yep, that's got that started. Now get my little 916 ratchet and tighten it all up before we put any pipe fittings on. Probably a bit much 515 there, but it sort of got away on me on the gun and I thought, oh, bugger it and leave it there. Um, we'll try and just take a bit of tension up with all these as we go. Make sure that's free. Feeling good. This um, pump came with the gear on it as well. I remember the early masses years ago you had to take take the pump off, but those times seem to have changed. Okay, that's good there. Now, I'll pop this fella on there. I've used bonded washers or bonded seals, dowdy washers under these fittings. And I'm not going to put oil in them and run it for a while. I'm just going to let everything settle out, settle down, and do all that sort of thing. Um, I've got bloody 515 everywhere. I just got very heavy handed with it. A big blob come out and I thought, oh bugger it, I'll just square. <laughs> I just spread it out and I probably should have wiped half of it off. Okay. There we go, the pressure fitting. That's my squeaky chair you can hear squeaking away. While I'm on sit down duty, supposed to be sitting down. <laughs> Yeah, it's bloody harder than it sounds, I tell you. Sitting down or not walking too much. Okay, so, and now we can bring this main pressure line back up to where he used to be. It's a little bit longer than it should be because I've got the gauge down further for testing a bit later on. Now, once you've fitted one of these gauge, these pumps, um, we're going to fill it with oil to the level to the bottom of the thread here. And as soon as we start it, we're going to just start him, stop him. And what we're looking for is just to keep that oil topped up. And we don't want to turn it. We don't want to do anything like that just yet. Um, I usually like to let the pump run for a little while before pulling it straight up onto a leaf. Like if you go left, right, left, right, um, straight away and pull it straight up onto a leaf. I, I don't know, I just don't like to do that. I, I would prefer to just let the pump run a bit. I don't know what sort of testing they would do in the factory. suppose they'd run all the pumps up and so that's tight that's tight and this is tight okay that's fitting the pump no need to play with that anymore just at the moment when I 
when I can free this front kingpin up here, the, the one straight down here, when I can free that up, um, get a, put the steer, steering cylinders back in place, and I'm waiting for a kingpin housing for the left hand side. So I'll, there's no use running that just yet. There's nothing we can do with it. So um, I'll probably put a bit of oil in and that'll do. So there you go, that's mounting the pump. We'll do a few more steering tests once we get um, once we get going again and, and once we get the parts that we need, but being around Christmas time, <laughs> good luck with that, I suppose, eh?